this week on Culture Q. Brittany is finally free. We celebrate Trans Awareness Week. And chat with Versus creators, Devin and Ned. It's Andy Luani here. And I'm Cheryl Lazar. This is Culture Q. And here are some of the highlights this week in queer culture. We did it, y'all. After years of the Free Britney movement, Britney Spears is now finally free from her infamous conservatorship. For the last 13 years, pop idol and queer icon Britney Spears has been placed under a highly restrictive conservatorship under her father, Jamie Spears, meaning the star had virtually no control over her finances, career, or even personal medical decisions. But as of last Friday, all of that has changed. And as of today, effective immediately, the conservatorship has been terminated as to both the person and the estate. The Free Britney movement originally started in 2019 from a podcast titled Britney's Graham, which also inspired documentaries like Britney vs. Spears and Framing Britney Spears. Of course we had doubt, but it, it, it's incredible and it's exactly what we've been fighting for and what Britney's been fighting for for 13 years. The movement is largely made up of Britney's fans who, let's be honest, are mostly queer people and they aimed to help Britney through advocacy as they felt Britney supported them through her music. One member of the movement, Patrick Kate, told Pink News, She is my idol. She is a beacon of strength. Her music and stardom were my introductions to her, but her personality and resilience are what I've fallen in love with. And it seems Britney has that same resilience reflected back to her from her fans. She tweeted, Free Britney movement, I have no words. Because of you guys and your constant resilience in freeing me from my conservatorship, my life is now in that direction. We here at Culture Q are so happy for you, Brittany, and we're so proud of all the queer people who made this happen. But Shira, what else is happening in pop culture? Well, Andy, it's Trans Awareness Week, so let's celebrate some firsts for the trans community that happened this week. Starting us off is Brian Michael Smith, who made history as the first trans man to be featured in People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive issue. Smith, who you might know from Fox's 911 Lone Star, is no stranger to making the news. He was also the first black trans man to land a series regular role on network TV. We have seen more authentic representation. So I love that the characters that I play are not victims, they're people who are valuable. Reacting to news about being the sexiest man on TV, he had this to say. I've been called many things, this is a first. Incredibly honored to be included in this list. Big love to people for the historic shout out. Another person making history this week is pop superstar Kim Petras. The Heart to Break singer became the first ever transgender performer to take the stage at the MTV European Music Awards and even debuted two new songs. You see it so right, you want to Ahead of the awards, she was quoted saying, I watched the EMAs since I was a kid, and being the first transgender performer on there is very surreal to me. It's a dream come true. She also hopes that performances like hers will break down stigmas and give people the courage to be who they are. I think it's super crucial that, that kids that are clearly in the wrong gender and clearly don't identify with their gender get the chance to be themselves. And with the awards taking place in Hungary, where LGBTQ rights are under attack, she felt she was making even more of an impact. She added this. I think it's so powerful that I get to perform and that I get to show who I am and that I don't get censored. And MTV fought for that and I'm proud. I'm really excited. And if you're looking to celebrate or support Trans Awareness Week, you can visit this site, glad.org slash transgender slash resources to find ways to get involved. This week, I got a chance to sit down with the creators and hosts of Reverie's original game show, Versus. Who were you interviewing for three hours on your Sunday serve Q&A, to which you decried when I first met you, you were so down to earth, I really related to you. It was the best night of my life. Do a tongue pop. Uh, Rebecca Black? Yes! Okay. I'm here with the lovely Devin and Ned. First of all, love the background, love the outfits. How are we doing this morning? Super great. We're just uh, really excited about Versus, which will be airing on December 4th on Rivery TV. What is to be included in season two? Well, it's longer. Episodes are twice as long as they were. Okay. And there are more of them as well. 
three times as much fun. The shows are like almost like a fever dream in a weird way. <laughs> I want to know how did this idea of Versus come about for those who may not know the show? Ned and I are both creators. We're both music based and comedy based. So putting that all together, you know, Ned's British and I'm originally Canadian and we just like illuminating our friends and having a good time with them. And that's how this show came together. Well, then the first season came out of the start of COVID when yeah. everyone was locked down, we're at home all the time and we didn't want to stop creating. We wanted to keep doing things. How did the idea for you being a floating head like come about? <laughs> like, I don't even know. It just seemed like a the seemed natural obvious. thing to do. Yeah, it seems obvious. I suspect it was your idea, Probably. but I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. It's a lot of preparation and then yeah. the thing happens in real time pretty much. It brings out the best in you because there's no way you can study for it. I mean, did people try to study for this? We specifically say, you know, there's you don't have to prepare anything. You just, just show up on the Zoom call and, uh, you know. And er say yes. And say yes. And how do you get so much background information about like, each and every one of your guests because you come with a lot of stuff prepared about each one you have. We go very, very deep. You can see people going, I can't even, oh yeah, I did do that. And when it comes to season two, are there any games that are different from season one? Every game's completely different yes. really. They fall into a few categories. Land, sea, or sky, or is it Disney or porn? <laughs> I like that symbol for <laughs> Obvious, yeah. Obvious. Yeah. Obvious. Were there any moments that stood out to you? I think one of the really sweet ones was Mark Anthony Samuel. The word penis in different countries. He matched all six up. Okay. Okay. The show isn't about, is this the right thing? That's an adult thing. That's really not the kind of people that we cast. We like people who just off the top of their head, because that's always the right answer. It seems like, no, not only the game, but also yourself and recall top of mind, like, did I do that? Did I not do that? How well do you know yourself? It's a great thing to see across the show, but you know, you as the co-creators of the show, what do you hope people get every time they watch this? It's dumb fun. And I think, you know, I, hopefully people will come away knowing the contestants yeah. just a little better as well and seeing maybe a, a slightly different side of them from what they'd normally see. Thank you, Devin and Ned, for taking the time to sit with us. If you want to catch everything for season two of Versus, it starts right here on Reverie on December 4th. And now it's time to take a look at some LGBTQ news from around the world. This week, we want to highlight some good news coming out of China, starting with a new gender clinic for trans youth that opened in the Children's Hospital at Fudan University. The clinic will focus on both gender affirmative care and mental health, signaling a huge step forward for China, especially as concerns over the government's LGBTQ crackdown have been mounting. The director of the Beijing LGBT Center, Jin Ying, said it's definitely a good sign. It's essential to have transgender clinics targeted towards children, and teenagers. And another exciting update out of China, there's a new gay dating show. The new show, titled Boy Skation, will be part reality show, part dating competition, and part documentary, following 10 men as they navigate the complexities of being LGBTQ in Chinese society. The host of the show, Vinci Wang, says he hopes the show can help change public opinion and that, quote, after watching, they can realize this is the reality, so we should be more accepting. Okay, now get your pride flags ready because Taiwan won their bid to host World Pride in 2025. The event will mark 50 years of pride celebrations worldwide and will be the first time that any country in East Asia has hosted the gathering, which can draw crowds of up to 5 million people. Interpride co-president Julianne Sanjivan said this in a statement, bringing World Pride to this region for the first time will create a significant impact to the much needed visibility and awareness of human rights for the LGBTQIA community there. And lastly, K-pop stands get excited. In South Korea, the first all-queer boy band just dropped their debut single. The four-member group, known as The Lionesses, released a bonafide bop called Show Me Your Pride, an anthem they hope will inspire other queer people to live authentically, especially in South Korea. One of the band's members, Foxman, told Advocate, I think Korean society is still very conservative, and I think our perspectives and perceptions will change more in the future. You can find their music streaming on Spotify and Apple Music and catch their new single that's set to drop sometime in December. And that's your look of 
probably the best version we've done of queer news from around the world. Don't know what to watch this weekend? The good news is we've got you covered with the Reverie Streaming Guide. Looking for a good documentary? Check out My Lesbian Version Diaries, which follows three different young women as they navigate the world of same-sex attraction, coming out, and sex positivity for the very first time. Or if you'd rather escape reality and watch a good movie, Gay Mean Girls is just for you. A coming-of-age dramedy that follows a young woman named Lucy Kim as she deals with the ins and outs of planning prom while also struggling to find community among a predominantly white queer scene. And if you're like me, can't commit to a whole movie, but love binging a series, check out Sink Sank Sunk. It follows a young gay recluse and touches on grief, empathy, and even a little romance as Cooper works to finish his late mother's passion project, a documentary about her synchronized swimming team. And that mother is played by the one and only award-winning Laura Linney. And of course, if you want to watch these and more amazing titles, you can find them right here on Reverie. Well, we're coming to the end of our show, which means we've got some culture cue inspiration. This week, our hearts got all warm and fuzzy when we found out that the fan favorite Simpsons character, Waylon Smithers, is finally getting a love interest. And if you haven't kept up with the iconic cartoon series, you know that Smithers has long been in love with his evil boss, Mr. Burns, and has been dropping hints about his sexuality ever since the show began. Never gone behind Mr. Burns' back before, but Sideshow Bob's ultra-conservative views eh, conflict with my choice of lifestyle. And after years of joking and playing on the sidelines, Smithers finally got to come out properly in an episode back in 2016. Now, five years later, longtime series writer Rob Lezebnik and his gay son Johnny helm the new episode and are excited to bring authentic representation into the decades-long run of the show. The new episode will feature Smithers with a new boyfriend, voiced by Victor Garber, and Lezebnik hopes the episode will open America's mind, saying, sometimes TV can have a real impact on people's thinking. And his son Johnny said how refreshing it was to see a gay character take front and center instead of being the punchline to a joke. He shared, I was really excited with this episode. We get to see the beginning, middle, and who knows how it ends of a gay relationship. How gay people date, how they meet, what it's like. The episode first airs on November 21st on Fox, and definitely we will be watching Donut in Hand. I will have a glazed donut. Okay. It'll be a nice glazed donut. But that's all we have for our show this week. It's Annie Lawani signing off, sadly. And I'm Cheryl Lazar. Thank you again for hanging out with us this week. And if you want to catch more of Culture Q, we're here each and every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Live and always on demand, right here on Reverie.